When in the spring of 1994, Scott Baker married Shelley Burrell, he was thrilled to gain a son as well, her three-year-old boy, Michael. But on May 28th at Grand Lake in Grove, Oklahoma, Scott discovered how quickly the things we hold dear can be taken away. Michael was just sitting in between my legs because he wanted to be by the wheel. He had never been out on a boat before. I had the boat full throttle, and that's what he liked. He liked the speed. You know, he's faster, daddy, faster. He was having a ball. Michael's mother, Shelley, and Scott's sister were also in the boat. We got almost to the end of the lake, and we turned around and started coming back. It was Memorial Day weekend, so there was a lot of boats out there. We was coming up on the bridge. I was looking back, just making sure there was no boats coming up. I never did see the boat because of the wake. I was just yelling, Michael, Michael. I looked around and I couldn't see him. I didn't know where he was. Jim Spencer and his wife were coming in from fishing when they saw the accident. The boat was going in a pretty good uh, full circle, at full throttle. And I was concerned about the boat coming back and running over somebody. At that time, I heard a little scream, and I looked up at the boat. Michael was still in it. It was going fast, and I just thought for sure Michael was going to stand up, get thrown out. Bill Homewood also came over to help pull the family out of the water. The consequences of the motor coming across somebody in the water is devastating. It's, it's just like sticking your hand in a meat grinder. We picked Scott up, and I asked him how much gas his boat had in it, and he said he just filled it up. I thought, my gosh, that thing will run for three and a half hours. I was close enough to where I could holler at him, telling him just to stay down. I was very worried because it was full throttle. And if it were straightened out and hit something, Michael, as small as he was, was going to be seriously injured, if not killed. The only idea I had at the time was for Scott to get back in the boat. We had enough power with our boat to get alongside it. But because every time it would hit its own wake, it would skitter out again and make a tighter turn. It was difficult to estimate when to go in and try it. Watch your boat right here. Scott missed. And that was really scary for me because the boat prop couldn't have missed him more than a foot. I told him, don't try that again, but we'll figure out some other way to do this. From her lakeside home, Pat Seawright spotted the rescue efforts. There just didn't seem to be anything that any of the boats could do. That boat was just, it was just wild. I couldn't see how anything could save this child. Every now and then you'd hear him scream, Daddy, or Mama. He's my stepson, but I, I love him like he's mine. Hey, bud! 17-year-old Matt Reeves was working at the family business in the nearby marina. Matt's father, Roy, was also working that day. Matt enjoys helping people. So, knowing Matt like I do, I yelled to him, be sure you've got a life jacket on.
here comes this kid on a wave runner. We didn't know what that kid was going to do. I seen Matt show up. And he came up and he asked me, would you mind if I tried to get into the boat? I said, if you can get in, well, I owe you, you know, I owe you dearly. has a reputation for being a, a wild man on the lake. You know, he rides that wave runner all the time. A young kid like that will do almost anything, so you're scared to death for him. I saw Matt go in and then back off. And I got to thinking, that's, that's my boy out there. If the runaway boat hits him or knocks him off the wave runner, he's going to be chopped by the prop. It was, it was scary. He circled a couple times. And then he turned around. Like he told himself, one shot's all I got. We're going to go for it. I shut the boat down. Everybody in the boats were cheering, and the horns were blowing and blasting. And Michael, he was shaking. I kind of realized what I did, and kind of my nerves were kind of shaking. I couldn't hardly pick him up. Everybody's mood changed so fast. I think they kind of wanted to just step out of my boat and walk on water over there. I took Michael into my arms, and I was holding him real tight. I couldn't stop crying. I remember him telling me a couple times, it's okay, Daddy, I love you, Daddy. It made me realize how much I really did care for him. It was all over, and uh, I just can't explain how tremendously relieved we were. It could have been so bad. I turned to Matt, and I said, I'd like to shake your hand, young man. About that time, the late patrol boat pulled up. I turned around to look for Matt, and he was gone. Off into the sunset. A month has passed since three-year-old Michael's boating accident. Whoa, I made it! You know what the boat did to my mom and dad? It threw them out in the water. It went around and around the circle again. And I was scared to stand up. But Matt Reed got me out of that boat. He's the hero. Man, read it for Batman. I label myself as a hero. I guess I had to do what I had to do, or what anybody could do. I love the water. If I'm not around water, I'm not comfortable. Lake Patrol Officer Jim Allred investigated the incident. I was very surprised that in an accident of this type, there was no injury. The rider of a jet ski or a wave runner should not even consider doing anything similar to this. This is an extremely dangerous thing to attempt. Like I said, it was just you know, the memorial day weekend when we just came. When I met him, he, se he seemed so young. He seemed like a little kid. And then I was thinking what he did. He put himself in danger. And he didn't even think about it. I think Matt did something that will be remembered for a long time.
next. You have a puppy stuck where, ma'am? I kind of thought it was a joke at first. I noticed the tone of her voice. She was serious. We were like her last resort. Our puppy 